Welcome to Opalash TV. I'm in London together with Diego Wouters. Diego is the chairman and CEO of Coriolis Capital. Coriolis Capital is a hedge fund based here in London and they're focused on insurance linked securities. Tell me a bit of your background and what is special about Coriolis Capital. My team and I, we have been working a long time together. Martin Jones, my portfolio manager in the company, has been actually working 20 years with me. So we have been in the insurance and reinsurance business for a long time. In the 80s, I was at JP Morgan, part of the team who created those mega insurance companies in Bermuda, which has made Bermuda a big insurance center since then. In the late 80s, and early 90s, I became head of mergers and acquisitions in the insurance and reinsurance worldwide for the bank. And actually, in 1992, we designed one of the first reinsurance contracts combining reinsurance with derivatives. And that contract was actually for a size bigger than a billion dollar. After that, in 96, we were involved in one of the first cat bonds ever structured in the market. In 97, we were involved in the first weather derivative ever done in Europe. In 98, I was running the first prop desk in natural catastrophe bonds and cat options. And in 1999, we launched one of the first hedge funds specialized in this field. Tell me more about your team. My team, as I said, has been working a long time with me. The two portfolio managers have degrees in physics and mathematics. I have five degrees, including a doctorate in, in physics as well. And the rest of the team is made of lawyers, operation people, uh, office manager, and so on. However, we have a very special relationship with Société Générale. Société Générale is basically the big brother next to us. They are the administrator, the custodian, the cash manager of orphans, but also they play a very unusual role. They are acting as a trustee for orphans. So should we have a problem with the FSA, the SEC, or should you not follow the risk management rules of the funds, they have the legal right to take over the management of our funds to protect our investors. And finally, Societe Generale is also an independent valuation agent of the funds. So they value every position we have got in our funds independently from us. Diego, you are dealing and investing in insurance products and particularly in reinsurance products. Tell me more about the relationships of reinsurance products with the financial markets. Well, as you can see, Matthias, on the slides here, there is a natural convergence between the financial markets and the reinsurance market. On one hand, the financial markets trade for trillions of dollars five risks. Credit, fixed income, equities, foreign exchange, and commodities. On the other hand, the reinsurance market trades dozens of risk only for 500 billion. So on one hand, the financial markets are trying to diversify themselves because the five risks are really highly correlated, as we all know. And on the other hand, these reinsurance risks uh, have no correlation really with the financial markets. So the reinsurance world is desperate to find a cover for their tail risk. If a big event happens in Florida, in California, it could really hurt an insurance or reinsurance company very badly. So they are desperate to find a cover for those tail risks. At the same time, there is regular, regulatory pressure for them to do so. So there is already a first communication. The second communication comes from the fact that non-tail risk, just normal risk also need to find cover. If you think about it, there are 130 cities in the world where at least 1 million people live. Half of them are in regions where you can have a natural catastrophe. So there is a very high concentration of high value assets in those regions and they tend to grow at a high rate of inflation. So even non tail risk needs to find a cover somewhere else. So you have the reinsurance world is desperate to find cover and the financial world is desperate to find something uncorrelated. Now, the beauty of natural catastrophes and some of the other risks that are in the ILS world is that they can be analyzed statistically. So one can put a number, a statistical number on the probability of a loss, which is something that the financial world likes. 
they like to know what is the measure of the risk, how much is the risk in terms of quantitative measure. And of course, they then they compute the spread they gain over that. So that's the first link between the two worlds. The second link between the two worlds is that obviously the financial markets is always looking for returns. Now, if you look at the second slide here, you can see that the reinsurance world is a very cyclical world. It's, it's a very unusual industry because it's a catch-up industry. So when a year has been very bad for the reinsurance world, what they would tend to do is to increase their rates the following year to catch up with their losses. And you have these constant cycles that happen like that. For example, in the 90s, you had the asbestosis crisis, which really hurts Lloyds here in London. And then in 2001, you had, of course, September 11th. In 2005, you had a number of hurricanes in the US. And those events trigger an increase in range rates rate the following year. So if you look again at this slide, you can see the market cyclical, but there are some products that, that consistently offer a good spread over fair value. Natural catastrophe bonds and cat options, which I also call IFWs, always offer a good spread compared to fair value because they are offered to the financial markets and the investor in the financial markets will always compare them to distressed debt, emerging market debt, and see if the spread is favorable or not. So these two instruments offer always a good spread of a fair value. Reinsurance itself, pure reinsurance and retrocession are cyclical. So at times they are very profitable, at times they are less profitable. Now you may say, why is that reinsurance companies accept that reinsurance can be unprofitable? Well, it's because very often they compensate that loss on the reinsurance side with the return on their portfolio, their investment portfolio. And therefore it creates those cycles. Diego, is there something like an ideal ILS strategy? In my view, and according to the slide here, an ideal ILS strategy consists of first having a core portfolio made of cat bonds and cat options. Because as I said earlier, they always offer a good spread over fair value. And add reinsurance or retrocession, which is reinsurance of reinsurance, when the cycle of reinsurance is very hard, when reinsurance is paying very well. And decrease a portion when the cycle is soft, when reinsurance is not paying very high returns. At the same time, I would recommend any investor to add to the cat bond, the cat bond and the option portfolio, also other products to diversify that portfolio, like weather derivatives, extreme mortality bonds, and other products of that style. ILS, or insurance-linked securities, are obviously designed to protect from natural catastrophes. But financial investors, obviously, they also want their risks and their assets to be protected. Now, when you invest in ILS, how can you protect yourself against this risk? Well, the answer to this question is made of two components. First, you need to analyze the risk when you're offered a CAD bond or a CAD option or range insurance contract. There are a number of agencies that have all the statistics of hurricanes, typhoons, earthquakes, storms, and so on. So you have really a large number of data associated to this. You, sometimes they go hundreds of years. So you can analyze the risk you have got from a pure statistical point of view, and then try to assess what is the spread you receive for that risk. So that's the first component of the analysis. The second component is the beauty of uh, nature is that natural, natural catastrophes are not correlated. I mean, there's no correlation between a typhoon in Japan and an earthquake in California. No physical correlation at all. So the key here is simple. Diversification, diversification, diversification. You need to build a matrix so that you have only a limited amount of the fund exposed to one risk at a time. So basically, our portfolios are made of a number of bonds and options, but some of them are only on earthquake in California, some are only on earthquake in Japan, on storms in the east coast of the US, on uh, hurricanes, on uh, North Sea storms and so on. And we make sure that the fund is never exposed by too much on each region. In addition to that, we create sub-regions. 
So for example, the hurricane region in the US is the whole east coast, obviously. Then we create sub-regions because you know that one hurricane is not going to devastate the whole east coast. And therefore, we have a limit on Florida, on Carolina, on Washington, on New York, New Jersey, and so on. So, as I said, two key ingredients. One is analyze the risk on a standalone basis. The second one is to analyze it on a portfolio basis and by emphasizing the diversification. Tell me more, how does this work in practice? How did your fund do during the 2008 financial crisis? And how did it do, for example, in 2011 during the Japanese earthquake? A lot of our clients ask us that question. If you look at our industry, basically in the last 15 years, since, since the ILS market started, we have been affected by three main crises. The first one was in 2005 with the three hurricanes, Katrina, Rita and Wilma, which hit the US. They were very large ones. And yes, some of the funds have been affected. Some of our competitors actually lost a lot of money. Because if you don't diversify enough your funds, you could be really hurt by those events. On the other hand, if you look at them, nothing happened in the financial markets. So there was no connection between the two worlds. The second event was on the financials market side, which was the Lehman crisis in 2008. With that crisis, obviously a lot of people lost money in the financial markets, but the ILS world was not very much affected. Some of the bonds went down in mark-to-market -market valuation because people needed liquidity, but an average cap bond didn't go below 85 cents to the dollar, when, as you know, a lot of credit instruments went down to 30 or 40 cents to the dollar. And all the cat bonds recovered back to par when they matured. Only four bonds out of the dozens of bonds at the time didn't have a good collateral. And this has been corrected since then. Now, practically all the bonds that you find in the market are collateralized by treasuries or supranationals backed by the US or Germany. So the second crisis was a financial crisis, but didn't affect the ILS market. The third one was what you mentioned, which was the earthquake tsunami in Tohoku in, in Japan last year. Yes, it's true that the Japanese equity markets went down for three months, but then recovered. And again, people like us, we were well diversified, were not very much affected by that event. Who are the investors in your fund? I can really put the investors in our funds in three different categories. Uh, first, you have the pension funds and life insurance companies. Obviously, they like the lack of correlation with the market. They like the fact that most of the cat bonds and cat options are LIBOR-based. Not reinsurance, but those instruments are LIBOR-based. And finally, if you manage your funds cautiously, and diversify well, you can provide a very low volatility vehicle. So these three ingredients, lack of correlation, LIBOR plus returns, and low volatility are ideal for a pension fund. Some of our funds have achieved LIBOR plus 5, 6, 7 percent over the last 12 years. The second category of investors are private banks and family offices. Again, they like the lack of correlation, they like the fact that we have good return, but also they like the fact that we can structure funds that are liquid. Some of our funds have monthly or quarterly liquidity, which private banks and family offices tend to like. Finally, you have the last category investors, who are the ones who really want the highest possible return with the lack of correlation. And there, what we of course play with is the diversification. We reduce the diversification, so we concentrate more the fund into the regions where the returns are the highest. And there we can achieve LIBOR like plus 12, 13, 14 percent. For those clients, we, we create funds that are dedicated to them or manage accounts. The ILS, the insurance linked securities market, has been around now for some 15 years. And there are a number of funds that are already playing in that field. How is Coriolis different from the other ILS funds? I think, Matthias, what makes us different is that first, we have been here a long time. So we have a long track record. We had only in all that period two negative years where we lost just 1%. All the other years have been positive. Um, I have a very stable team. All the members of Coriolis, of the staff of Coriolis, are shareholders in Coriolis. 
and the fund managers and myself have the largest portion of our wealth in our funds. So we have always co-invested uh, with our investors. Um, I should say our stable return comes from the fact that we always avoided the big losses. Uh, we are among the very few players who never had to create side pockets, never had to create new funds when things went wrong or change employer. So that's the first aspect is stability of our team and our performance. The second thing is that we offer the whole range of products. Cat bonds, cat options, um, reinsurance and retrocession, but also we are among the very few players in the weather derivative market. The second thing is that it's our independence. As I said, we are close to Société Générale, but we are an independent company. And at times, if you're owned by a big shareholder, you may receive too much money to invest when your opportunities may not be in this market. Let's not forget, this is not a huge market yet. It's growing fast, but it's not as liquid as the equities market. We are not in a supermarket when we pick up what we like in the, in the market to, uh, to invest. We have sometimes to be patient. And therefore, we have to make sure that we regulate the entries in our funds. For example, in 2004, when the reinsurance market was very soft, we closed our funds. We didn't take any money. And we opened our funds when the market was very hard, when reinsurance was very expensive in 2006 and 2007. But at the same time, our investors have the comfort of having Société Générale being our trustee and valuation agent. The next thing which is very important as well is that we are in London. We are less than a mile away from, from Lloyds of London. Lloyds of London is still the main worldwide insurance and reinsurance market. I know Bermuda and Zurich are important. Bermuda is very important for the US market. Zurich is very important for the European market. But Lloyd's and London in general is still the center for worldwide insurance. So if I summarize here, I think what is really important with this asset class and Coriolis is that it has proven to be a completely uncorrelated asset class. Even in the crisis, our funds have done quite well. The second thing is that it's very important to have a stable team. You cannot change your staff. You need to know the tricks of this industry. You need to know how it works. And finally, it's very important to have stable returns because people will not forgive you if you have a big loss.